Hi everybody! Today we're going to be talking about how to make your own sausage. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do and it's super easy. Uh, to get started, I should probably mention how important it is to be grinding your own meat anyway, if you have the capacity, because the USDA just took out origin labeling on all ground meat products. So you might be getting ground beef or ground pork from several different animals from several different countries, which can be a bit nerve-wracking. Um, and just in terms of traceability, in case something were to happen, it's not the best idea. So in addition to getting a great sausage recipe and some confidence in sausage making, we're also just going to learn how to grind meat in general, which is super useful. Um, so I'm starting with pork, which is 70% um, lean pork and 30% fat. And when I'm choosing the meat for sausage, I want to make sure I have good quality, obviously, ideally organically raised with good resources, pastured pork. Um, this particular animal came from uh, China Grove, North Carolina, which is a few hours from me. I live in Asheville. Um, and I really trust the farmer. I feel good about it. And so what I have here is a bit of pork shoulder. This would be a lean portion. This would be what I call a fat portion. And I'm sure to use fat from the back of the animal, between the back and the, and the skin, the fat back. And then the lean muscle, I just want to make sure to clear off as much of that thin fascial tissue, silver skin, off of it as possible. So I've kind of already done that. Um, and I've portioned each piece into, you know, roughly three inches long because I want it to fit through the shaft of my grinder. Um, the meat is partially frozen at this point. Um, that keeps um, the fat from smearing, um, which is just sort of an industry term for what happens when the fat comes to melting point and um, gets all mushy. Um, you won't get a good, good product if you let that happen. So if you were doing this at home, I would recommend open freezing your meat on a sheet tray, a lot like this one, after you've mixed in the spices. And so we're going to do a little primer on ratios and recipe right now. So we're going to make a just a basic breakfast sausage and I won't give you the recipe we're using here because I want you to buy my book which is called The Ethical Meat Handbook and you can find the recipe therein. Um, but I can give you a really basic sausage recipe. Anytime you're making a fresh sausage you really want your salt content to be about 1.75 percent of the total weight of meat. So as I mentioned earlier we're using 70 percent lean pork, 30 percent fat, and then of that weight, in this case, that's two and a half pounds of pork lean and a pound of pork back fat. And we're adding to that 1.75% salt. In this case, that's an ounce of kosher salt. You definitely want to make sure you're weighing things because salt of different brands has a different weight. Um, so if I were to say a tablespoon of salt and you were using diamond crystal as opposed to Morton, then you would get a different amount in that tablespoon. You have to have to weigh it. So uh, I have some garlic in here already, a little bit of fennel, and so I've teared the weight of this container, and I'm just going to go ahead and weigh out. Oops. And let's go ahead and add some black pepper to your recipe. You're going to want 0.7 ounces of black pepper, preferably fresh ground. We ground this up in a, a coffee grinder ahead of time. There we go. 27 ounces of pepper. The amount of garlic I have in there is about, I want to say, a tablespoon and a half, maybe two tablespoons, but I like garlic a lot, so feel free to cut that back if you'd like. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in about 0.2 ounces of dried thyme. So one ounce of kosher salt, um, that would give me my 1.7 pepper scent. And then I put in, you know, you could, you could put in roughly, a good ratio is roughly half the amount of black pepper to salt. I put in a little bit more than that. Actually, no, it's about half. Um, and then you'll want 10 to 14% liquid of some kind. It can be water, but better if it's not. It ought to be wine or stock or liquor or cream something with more flavor. Um, so today I think we'll use a little bit of white wine. So I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup. Of white wine. 
can go. A lot of people mix their sausage after grinding it, but I don't like to do that because all of us have bitten into a bite of sausage that had a little pocket of seasoning that didn't get well mixed in. And so I find if I mix everything before grinding, then the grinding process helps me blend the spices much, much, much better. So here I am mixing all of my spices together. You know what? I am going to throw in a couple more things just because I'm feeling fancy. And then I'm just going to mix all this in by hand. And then what I'll do, and pretending you have all the time in the world, I will put this on a sheet tray with the half pan right here. And I'm going to spread it out. And then ideally you would want to open freeze this for, you know, just while you get your grinder set up a bit. Um, because that way, especially if you're working with an electric grinder, your meat will be nice and cold when you're grinding. And why do we want the meat to be cold? Well, in addition to the, um, the fat smearing issue that we mentioned before, um, clearly with any time you're working with raw meat, bacteria is a concern. And anytime you're grinding meat up, um, you're increasing the surface area of that product and you're giving um, bacteria more of a substrate for reproducing. Um, so anytime you're reducing those, the pieces the size of the pieces, you want to make sure you keep it as cold as possible. Um, I've already got it partially frozen here, so I'm going to skip the open freezing step um, so that we can get on with the demo. So this is called the shaft. This is called the worm. The worm goes in the shaft. Sometimes you have to push it to get it seated all the way. This is called the knife. You want to put it in so the beveled side is facing inward, which is a little bit counterintuitive. That's a common mistake people make. And your grinder will come with two die. There's a coarse die and a fine die. We're gonna use the coarse die. There's a bit of a pin. You just wanna line up the hole and then push it into place. And then this little piece screws on to the top to make your grinder happen. Um, you could put all these moving parts in the freezer as well to make sure that they're nice and cold. And I will attest to this particular piece of equipment in combination with the, the KitchenAid mixer being able to work through pretty frozen product really well. Attach right here, there's a little nut that you can unscrew to loosen and screw to tighten. And I find that when you're working with really cold product, you wanna make sure this nut is screwed in nice and tight because you don't want the whole jigger turning on you. This guy is called the food tray and it goes on top. And normally this comes with what's called a food pusher, which I lost at some demo in some distant place. And so now I just use one of my stuffer horns. I like to run it on for the KitchenAid mixer between four and six or six and eight if you're feeling special. 